recording. Okay. I want to introduce uh, Jordan Yates. So we'll be talking about common application configuration for boards. Take it away, Jordan. Yep. Uh, so as I mentioned before, before we restarted this, um, this is about um, device tree, linkers, how Flash and RAM are partitioned um, across several boards, across boards. Uh, so brief introduction of myself to start with. Uh, my name is Jordan Yates. I work for the CSIRO, which is Australia's national research organization. Um, I'm part of the distributed sensing group and we're focused on low power kind of context aware sensing stuff, um, mostly focusing on agriculture and smart objects at the moment. And there's a nice link there if anyone is interested in what we do. But what this conference is, um, or the, the general flow of this conference, um, I'll briefly introduce the, um, the problem that we're discussing. Um, I'll go over how Zephyr is currently implementing, um, or currently trying to solve this sort of problem. Um, what problems that um, raises. Um, then I'll be a little bit of background in terms of uh, what I've been able to dig up in, in terms of how Linux currently does partitioning. Um, so that's all kind of background information. And then the next two parts are kind of a framework of a solution and then discussion. So once we get to the proposed solution part, um, happy to start taking questions and comments and whatever else. So moving on. Um, so Zephyr supports many types of applications, as I'm sure most of you know. You can build an application standalone. You can build an application as a bootloader. It can be chain loaded by a bootloader. And then kind of more recently, I guess, there's been the Cortex M33 secure and non-secure application stuff that's come in. And each of these types has, or typically has kind of unique requirements in terms of where, where, um, yeah, where RAM and ROM need to be placed um, for those applications. So this is just a bit of a graphical view of that. So um, it's kind of organized by memory and also have, um, what applications run when. So obviously the standalone just kind of starts at zero and off it goes. And But for more complex setups, you've got bootloaders and whatever else. Um, so Zephyr obviously uses the board abstraction to describe uh, physical hardware um, through a combination at the moment of device tree and kconfig. Um, standalone bootloader and chain loaded applications are compiled against kind of the same board definition. Um, whereas secure and non-secure applications are compiled against different board definitions, although they do um, they do include some common files typically. And the current mechanisms for specifying where RAM and ROM are are kind of split across device tree, uh, kconfig, and the linker scripts. Um, so at a very, very high level, um, the current setup results in some, in some problems. Um, you typically partition flash and RAM or flash at the moment in device tree, but this is generally ignored by the linker or is often ignored by the linker and users currently don't have a way to um, generate memory regions to kind of force variables into addresses so if i want my int to start at address 6000 there's not really a way to do that and that's important for stuff like um, uh, the settings partition and for libraries like that where they need to live at the same location across reboots and applications. So the goal of this session is to determine how Zephyr should be specifying the kind of size and offset of flash and RAM for, for these various application types. So how does it currently work? Um, so at the device tree level, um, the flash and SRAM sizes are defined at the system on chip level. So for example, a NRO52840 would specify it has 256K of RAM and one megabyte of flash. 
let's get some feedback there. Turn off. Good. Um, then typically at the board level, you see partitions defined. Um, there's an example on the right there. So for an MCU boot sort of system, you'd have a boot partition and then some slots and some scratch space. And then SRAM and flash, oh, sorry, the chosen nodes, SRAM and flash kind of, um, they're used by the linker to um, determine how large things are most of the time. And then there's that handy uh, Zephyr code partition one, which is sometimes used and sometimes not. Um, at the kconfig level, there's this use DT code partition that basically instructs the linker to use the chosen node that we just saw, that code partition, instead of just the whole flash space. And then if that's not set, then you have the option to override where that flash, where the flash starts, how large it is. But then once, if, if you do use the DT code partition, you can't use those values anymore. And then typically the bootloader symbols kind of select the use DT code partition. Um, at the at the linker level, um, there's basically a bunch of if defs. Um, it's a bit more complex than this in terms of what it is in the actual file, but this is the, the simplified version of it. So coming down from the autoconf generated files, you have the kind of um, the config flash size and config flash load offset. These are automatically generated from the device tree partitions um, through just default values. And the same sort of thing with the RAM. So it just it pulls the values from kconfig, which in most cases pulls it from device tree defaults. And then you just have the kind of flash and SRAM memory regions, just um, yeah, one of each, and that's it. So what kind of problems does this setup um, lead to? Um, so really the, the core problem that this results in is that for some configurations, i.e. bootloader and for chain loaded applications, there's a lot of explicit information. You have your flash has already been partitioned. You say which partition things go into, and then the linker uses that. But for the other major category of application, which is standalone, all of this information is kind of implicit. The chosen nodes tend to just point out the, the flash controller and the SRAM node. And then anything else which device tree is specifying is just basically ignored. So the implicit information for standalone is that the entire flash space is available for the application. But most boards in Zephyr actually like define a partition for the uh, non-volatile storage subsystem, which actually means that for most of the boards in the tree, when you just build a standalone application, it's it's kind of incorrect. Well, the implicit assumptions are wrong. The entire flash base isn't really available. Um, so when you're using this implicit information, the tooling has to make kind of assumptions when attempting to reserve memory regions. Um, and kind of the end result of this is that when you have partitions under the same, under the Zephyr flash um, node, these partitions are ignored and they will be overwritten by the linker with no warnings, um, at least for cases where no variables are placed in those partitions at compile time, which is the case for the settings um, the non-volatile storage partitions. Um, well, I have apparently got a good chip slide in there. Um, other kind of minor side problems is that the final generated device tree files contain kind of extra or wrong information for a given application. Um, a standalone application will still contain those MCU boot partitions, which we saw earlier. Um, this means that the flash API, the flash map API contains partitions you can open them, which have no, no meaning, um, which 
marginally bloats code size, I guess. Um, but the biggest problem is that when you've got these partitions which aren't really correct, it makes um, automatically generating linker configurations from device tree uh, very difficult. You just end up with overlapping regions everywhere and it doesn't really work properly. Um, and not being able to automatically generate regions from um, device tree means that useful information is thrown away. So I've got an example partitioning on the right here from um, the NRF 9160 dev kit. Um, it has some uh, reserved memory nodes because of the secure and non-secure image thing and also a um, chunk of RAM which is used for some shared memory between the two. And you can see it, it selects SRAM node to be the secure part and then flash zero. Um, what that kind of ends up with is you've got flash which says how much you've used out of your one megabyte but then the SRAM node is kind of well the SRAM region is kind of just set at 88 kilobytes and it's not immediately obvious to the user like well where's the rest of my memory gone um a small problem but i would say a problem nonetheless but other problems is that are that you actually have no way to place variables in that shared memory region that was declared before um there's just like the link it has no way of placing variables there whereas um what I feel would be a, a better path forward is if you were automatically generating regions from the device tree info, you would get what's down on the bottom right there. So you can see where your memory is going. And because there's memory, memory regions, you can actually place variables in, in other sections as well. Um, another minor problem is that kind of secure and non-secure applications use separate board definitions. Um, there may be an, another reason from this that I'm not aware of, but um, basically the two the two application types, they're using the same physical hardware, they're using the same system on chip. Conceptually, there's not a huge difference from using a bootloader plus a chain loaded application and a secure and non-secure application. The only real difference is the way the code is loaded and some peripheral offsets in some cases, or maybe all cases, I'm not sure. So what are the existing partitioning schemes? Um, so this will mostly focus on, or well, basically entirely focus on Linux. So there's fixed partitions. Um, I'm sure most people are aware that this is currently used in Zephyr. Um, the Linux um, description of this is used for platforms which have strong conventions of which, purpose, which portions of Flash are used for what purposes. Um, that definitely sounds like Zephyr and microcontrollers, so it makes sense that this has been used. Um, and these partitions kind of hang underneath the flash device. So yeah, the flash memory specifies a, re a region and then you can split up that memory into different chunks if you like. Um, we've also got reserved memory, which is used a little bit in tree. Um, there's been a little bit, more, a little bit more added in the last week or so, I believe. Um, the Linux Linux definition of this is it's memory that the operating system excludes from normal usage. Um, so it's typically memory which is um, assigned to different device drivers or frame buffers or um, display drivers, whatever stuff which. Um, it would always be an error to return that address from malloc. Um, yeah, so there's some entry usage to find memory regions, as I kind of showed a couple of slides ago for the um, the RAM partitioning. And it exists as a root node. It doesn't exist underneath a SRAM device. Um, RAM, oops, it's a bit of an oddball to throw in here, but it's kind of the only example I could find in here of something you could almost consider an application which is being put into a defined memory region. Um, Linux uses it for 
when something panics, you have a defined memory range, which you can use to um, store things in right, between reboots. Obviously, it's not used in Zephyr, but it's, I thought it was useful to put in here as an example of when they do need to find RAM for an application, kind of. That's how they do it. Um, I guess the biggest uh, thing coming out of Linux is that beyond that reserved memory region, this reserved memory setup, it doesn't, Linux doesn't really have a mechanism to partition RAM. And it makes sense when you kind of think about Linux and that it is mostly driven by dynamic memory allocation. So it's pretty easy to just dynamically allocate around your reserved memory chunks. Um, unfortunately, as we're a statically compiled system, we don't quite have that luxury. So we can't just say, go into SRAM and avoid this random one kilobyte chunk in the middle. Um, the linker just kind of doesn't allow you to do that. So what is the solution that I am proposing? Or a baseline solution? Um, yeah, so at this point here, I guess I'm, I should probably bring up the chat or whatever. Um, but if people have start having comments or whatever, um, it's probably worth um, starting that. So basically there's kind of two overarching principles this is kind of following. So the core memory regions, the flash and SRAM, should only be as large as the memory addresses that you can actually validly link values into. So it should be impossible to cause problems by um, using up all of the memory that is assigned. Um, and memory is currently partitioned in device tree, both flash and RAM. So therefore, the linking memory regions should probably reflect that device tree setup. So because flash and RAM are treated a little bit differently to each other. Um, again, the proposal treats them a little bit differently. So the proposal for Flash is to basically force the behavior of the old use DT code partition symbol. Um, that obviously implies removing the DT code partition symbol. And yeah, basically forcing um, for, forcing the memory to be placed into the chosen node there, as, as opposed to being able to change that through kconfig later. Um, Zephyr Flash then, instead of being kind of a bit of an arbitrary concept of the Zephyr Flash device, it specifically refers to the memory that constants are, link, are linked into. Um, it can just point to the to a Flash device if there's no partitions on it. But otherwise, it does need to point to a partition. Um, the outcome of that is that um, if if the Zephyr Flash refers to a part, part, refers to a partition, um, you just automatically generate linker regions for that partition and all the siblings. Otherwise, you just generate the linker region for the Flash node. Um, SRAM is a little bit more complicated. Um, and that's due to the fact that you can have many system on chips in Zephyr that Zephyr already supports have multiple RAM nodes, but the um, reserved memory um, setup doesn't live un underneath um, SRAM nodes. It is a, a root node. So the basic idea is to iterate over each um, each RAM compatible, um, and then basically do a check to see if reserved if there's any reserved memory nodes which lie inside that SRAM. Um, if if there is no reserved memory inside that SRAM, you just generate a linker region for that entire SRAM chunk. But if there if there are reserved memory nodes inside of that, you don't. 
and then you obviously iterate across all of the reserved memory um, nodes and generate linking regions for that. Um, the restriction for Zephyr SRAM is that you must point it at a node that results in a memory region. So you can't point it at a SRAM node, which has reserved memory hanging underneath it. Um, determining the above, like whether an SRAM node has reserved memory underneath it, um, will probably require some additional device free outputs. Um, this this complication was a bit of a late addition by me. I haven't had a chance to prototype it yet. Um, but the reason why this kind of check if it exists or doesn't exist is required to ensure that you don't end up with um, multiple overlapping memory regions when you have reserved memory that points to those secondary nodes. Because you can imagine if you just generated uh, memory regions for all of the SRAM compatibles and all of the reserved memory, you'd have a memory region which contains the entire SRAM, but also a reserved memory chunk just sitting in the middle. And those would, um, the linker wouldn't, the linker would kind of accept that if, the, if there's no variables placed there, but it's obviously an invalid configuration. So what's that look like in terms of device tree? So the idea here is that you would have your example board.dts, which might have some common partition. Um, so maybe all of your all of your application types have a storage partition sitting, sitting at the end of flash. And then you have this concept of kind of application layouts. So for this particular board, you have the option to compile an application standalone as a bootloader or as a MCU boot slot zero application. And the idea there is that each overlay um, both sets up the required partitions, but also sets up the um, Zephyr flash um, chosen node to point to the correct place for each of those. So the goal of this is to basically, at the end of the device tree um, passing step, you have a quote unquote correct uh, partition table. You don't have MCU boot partitions under when you're compiling standalone and vice versa, um, which means you, you can um, you can automatically generate all your regions. So that's uh, the flash case is simple, I guess. Um, the SRAM example here is just to, um, to show you, I guess, a little bit of what that looks like. Um, so in this case, we have um, a board with a flash and two SRAM um, devices. Um, and I think I'm trying to demonstrate here, potentially in um, ex executing the application from RAM, I think where the, the situation where the bootloader kind of pulls an image from external flash into RAM or something. Um, so the idea here is that you'd have, for the chain loaded application, you'd have um, some reserved memory partitions and you'd, you'd select the right one um, in your overlays. Um, obviously, this probably requires a nicer way to include device tree overlays from the device tree overlays from the command line. Um, obviously, no one wants to write that um, second option there every time they build an application. Um, but that can be pretty easily solved through West. This is just a potential um, result. Um, so you just, yeah, you could provide a um, dash L as a suggestion for which overlay you want. Um, and that just selects the layout overlay from the board folder. And the none case is kind of required for the next slide. Um, in kconfig, we would basically, well, I would propose to basically remove all those symbols which can modify where code is placed. Um, it, at least in my opinion, doesn't make a huge amount of sense to specify all these layouts in device tree and then just kind of 
modify them later. Um, for applications which do need to be loaded into locations which are different, um, you can always fall back to the standard application specific um, device re-overlays for boards and then just use the none layout. So you just you get the, the layout you want. And on the, on the linker side, uh, there's not much to talk about really. Um, the automatic generation of linker regions has already been demonstrated in a couple of pull requests. Because um, you have the standard device tree macros for iterating over things. Um, there's a couple of other opportunities, I guess, from this. Um, you could have the option to also have a configura uh, Kconfig configuration file for layouts. For example, um, slot zero could set the bootloader MCU boot thing. Whether that's useful or not, or well, I think it's marginally useful. Whether it's useful enough, I'm not sure. And if there's, you could also support external memory mapped flash if you add a compatible and just run the same behavior over that. Um, right. Well, that's basically the proposal. Um, I can see a couple of comments. Um, the RAM OPS thing has been addressed by Carlos. Um, Zephyr intending to support driving dynamic mechanical systems when a rush to reset occurs. Um, I don't think that's particularly relevant for this discussion. Um, so, the question. Yep. Um, so, I, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm not really, really clear on, on how you uh, avoid to create overlapping uh, regions uh, when you have reserved the memory nodes. Um, for example, if, if you go to slide 22, maybe. Uh, this one? Right. No, the next one. No, the 22 is the first day. Go back. Back again. Oh, sorry. Yep. Okay, yep. this one. Yeah. Um, so let's say that, that you do not do not have at the beginning any reserved memory. Okay, you just have the SRAM. Okay. Uh, so in theory, you have just one single um, region, right? You have the SRAM region and nothing else. Yep. If, if you okay. Uh, now and let's say that at a certain point you want to add the uh, the SRAM zero modem um, region, right? Yep. So uh, in that case, you you um, uh, you are forced to uh, to split the SRAM into three regions, right? Or, yes. Okay. Uh, so so you you are creating now three not overlapping regions: SRAM zero secure, uh, SRAM zero modem, and the third one, right? Yes. So. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Continue. Yeah, and, and uh, um, that means that in in that case uh, you should also modify your linker script to. Uh, uh, to allocate the sections uh, that were before in the in the generic SRAM region, now the, these regions are going to be allocated in a, a differently named region, right? Um, yeah, so the region names would be different. Um, that's not difficult to set up. Um, the, yeah. In terms of in terms of the naming, it's not a problem. Um, so I mean, I mean, um, I mean uh, that, that uh, if, if every time you you add a new reserved memory node, you have manually split and partition the always run. Yeah, so you, you do have to manually. You you, you can't just throw in yeah. meter modem zero in the middle, because then you have no way of. It, it, it would fall back to that case where the information is implicit and you're then mm. trying to make assumptions. You, you, can, you There's no way of like then specifying when you build for non-secure, I actually want that second half of RAM as opposed to the first half. Um, yeah, but, but uh, let's say that you do not have a secure in non-secure, right? But you are in non-secure everywhere, okay? Um, 
So you, you have a portion of, of the SRAM at the beginning, the SRAM zero modem region, and the SRAM at the at the end of your yep. memory space. So at, at this point, you you should try to allocate the, the regions like half in the SRAM zero at the beginning and the other half to this to the to the last region, right? Uh, so in an ideal you, world, you, you have now a, a region in the middle. Yeah. So the challenge is that the linker doesn't allow you to just say um, allocate the first 50 kilobytes of um, RAM data in this part and then skip over 100 kilobytes okay. and then allocate the rest of it. So by default, you kind of need to choose which contiguous chunk of memory you want to all allocate your variables into or link your variables into. That's not to say that you can't um, manually um, assign some variables into the um, the other region. So if, for example, most of your apps sat in the, the secure image memory in this in this layout, there's nothing to say that if you start using too much memory there, you couldn't also add regions into the non-secure part and um, and say, okay, my Bluetooth stack variables go into this part here because I need the space. That that that's doable with the current um, linker snippet API. Yeah, but but but, but I, I have a follow up follow up question really then. Uh, so uh, that means that um, uh, let's say that, that, that you you have a board, okay? Uh, on in, on this board you have one single SRAM region, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, at a certain point you you want to add a new overlay or a new board derived from this one, uh, but on this overlay or on this new device tree. Uh, that is maybe, maybe including the old one, uh, there is a new recept me memory region that, that you, you want to add for some reason. Uh, in in that case, this is not, not possible, right? Um, sorry, I, I didn't quite follow that. Uh, my, uh, my, my, my point is that uh, since you have to adapt your linker script to the new regions, right? So, the, the goal is that users never have to touch the linker scripts whatsoever. You just, you generate the linker script regions from the device tree thing. And that's kind of the end of the story. Um, yeah. So the goal is if you, if you change the device tree partitions or reserve memory slots, you will just get new, new, um, linker outputs. OK, but, but you, you cannot change the reserved memory from an overlay device tree, for example. Well, it... Why not? Right. I, I guess I'm, I, I think there, I'm not sure, Carl, I, I get the, so you have the base device tree for the board or whatever that's got an SRAM region. Um, you've got a second board or, or system that's wanting to change that. And, and I'm, I'm trying to understand the inheritance in this in this in what you're you know, the example that you have here. We lose you, Carlo. I think he's muted. Carlo, you're muted if you're trying to speak. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, yeah, um, if, if you go back to slide 22, maybe I can explain my point better. Uh, sorry, which slide? 22? Uh, again, back again on the other one. Yeah, I don't, one suggestion, Carlo, maybe, and I don't know, if in the chat, if you can sort of you know what your if you have an overlay like that's based on this kind of what that sure. what you're thinking because that may make it a little easier for us all to be on the okay. same page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, I'll go right there. Yeah, yeah. So. 
I, I, I give space yeah. to other people. Sharing this is a little bit awkward, I guess, in terms of people trying uh, <laughs> to mock up what's happening. The, the live in person whiteboard uh, kind of thing would be nice, but yeah. I mean, I can open up a VS Code window and try and quickly type things people propose, but yeah. um, so let's try to go through some of the comments. Uh, Dominic, uh, yeah, sure. Um, Marty, keep predefined layouts without inclusion by picking. Yeah. I was wondering on the on the comment you made about different boards versus different overlays, which I think is very relevant as well, and <clears throat> and different apps. <laughs> so there's like a, three things here: the app you want to flash and what type of app that is. So you know, Dominic is saying, okay, that shouldn't matter. I kind of you know, from a purely uh, statical point of view, I also sort of agree, but I don't know if it's going to be practical. So um, that's why I sort of was saying, okay, maybe some apps should be able to select specifically one of the layouts. But I don't know if that's a good idea either. I, you know, it's it's just the things I'm throwing at the table. Uh, so if, 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 that's, yeah. if that's required, then you can do the standard um, uh, Inside your CMAKES list, you can just set set your your overlay file and just specify a configuration of um, of none. Or, I mean, it doesn't have to be none; it can be some other mechanism. Um, because we would standardize those names, right? Lay, layout, bootloader, overlay, like all all then all boards or apps or the uh, they would have to use that particular name, right? Um, no, there's, not, there's nothing to say they have to use the same names. Um, How for, is the L dash L going to work? You you actually want to you just to type dash L bootloader then? Yeah. So the idea is that okay. dash L you get you give it a name, and that gets just shoved into this layout slash whatever dot dot overlay. And if that file exists, great. If it doesn't, throw an error. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's essentially just a shortcut for a dash D DC overlay file. That's it. Or to append uh, to it the list. Yeah. Um, whether it appends or sets, um, if if you append to the list, it means you can't really do set in your application list anymore. But that's kind of a nuance you could just you could avoid by just appending instead. Hmm. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But shouldn't we try to be a bit more? Uh, I don't know. A little, you know, try to specify this a little bit more, uh, because you know what you're proposing is sort of a shortcut to specify overlays, um, but then people need still need to solve the problem. I uh, know. I guess you're also proposing that then inside the overlays, things have uh, uh, things are assigned, like you were saying in the yeah, in the next slide or in the previous one. Sorry, where you say, okay, this is the chosen one. Uh, yeah, exactly. Which is the same that Marty Marty had in his proposal that he linked, very similar to that. So, um, and in his case, all of those were instead of having separate overlay files, they were all in the in the same DTS um, with different names. Yeah, so I'm just trying to speed read it. Um, the, if the partitions live inside the, if all the partitions possible live inside the DTS, then I guess, okay. Yeah, you got the chosen thing to select which meta partition to use, I guess. So that would kind of solve that in some respect. Yeah, yeah you, pick, but it, you but pick an entire it, partition layout, right? Rather than just picking, I agree with you, picking just a code yeah. partition is a little bit weird because we're pointing into a partition layout that was really designed for MCU boot, right? And that's kind of, and then the scratch partition is being selected if the settings partition, oh, sorry, the settings partition is being used for a layout that's inspired by MCU boot, which I totally agree with you is completely wrong for standalone plus settings, right? But I just, I, I don't know about all this including and all this extra like kind of stuff on top when we yeah. could just so, kind of define them all. The, the one thing that this, so this works fine for Flash. Um, it it doesn't work for RAM unless you, unless we define a new 
RAM partitions thing. Because because the reserve node is just kind of a root node, you don't have a way of like selecting like a chunk of things. Is there any requirement that we have the same solution for flash and RAM? Um, no, I mean they're already they're already different different solutions, right? The flash uses the partitions, whereas SRAM uses reserve memory. Um, I know that a lot of the random, a lot of the feedback I've gotten for various proposals has been, well, Linux does it using reserve memory. Why yeah. do we need to change any of that? Um, Maybe we should yeah. try to figure out which one we want to talk about. Then I don't know if we can have both conversations at once. Well, I, I, th I think I think it's more a matter of the there's there's no current way of specifying a grouping of reserved memory um, partitions that you could use with the solution that you linked there. What do you mean? Um, so like so you've got your Zephyr, Zephyr flash partitions equals partitions MCU boot. Sure. For example, do you want to do you want to bring it up actually, just so everybody can see? It? Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, let's uh, Windows. That one good enough. Don't steal my bookmarks. Um, right. So this is the. Proposal from well, Marty linked. Um, so basically, this proposal is kind of this meta partitions um, thing. So partitions layout. Um, the MCU boot contains the MCU boot partitions. Um, and then this is your standalone partition. Plus storage. Plus storage. Sorry. Yep. Um, and then the chosen node selects which of these meta partitions to to use. And what's what you can do is you can also just define your own. And this is kind of similar to the way that the pinboxing work is going. You know, you don't have to select from this set. You could just pick a node somewhere. And as long as it has the right compatible and you point your chosen at it, then, you know, Bob's your uncle. Yeah. So as I was, as I was saying, like, so you got this, you got this solution for the flash partitions, but what does that look like for um, brand partitions? Right, and I guess I, I'm trying to say I'm not trying to solve that problem, and it doesn't seem like there's oh, okay. a requirement that we that we solve those problems in the same way. Um, yeah, so this you, you could solve the flash partition in this way, um, and then solve the SRAM through layout for argument's sake. Um, but it seems. Seems odd that you would. Seems odd to use two different mechanisms, especially given that, um, like from the command line, how how would you be intending to set or to select the correct flash partitions? You could do it in any way you wanted, right? You could pick a small little overlay that just has this little chosen, right, and use it. Um, you know, you could. We, you know, if, if you could even, if you really wanted to go to an, an extreme of adding like a new top level CMake or West option, you know, just give it the name uh, of the node label that you wanted, right? And then you don't have to deal with as much of the, like for predefined stuff, you don't have to deal with as much uh, like kind of magic of like where are these located? Because I guess what what bothers me about these includes is that it's like, we're we're sort of giving relative paths to places that I'm assuming you're saying are in the board directory uh yes and then like what if what if i don't want it in the board directory what if i want it in some other place you know what i'm seeing what if i have a common direct directory in some other module that where all my layouts are now i'm back to absolute paths whereas if we just stick them in the in in the board dts's then you can just sort of select them with less text right that's that's kind of where my feeling is coming from so, but so what's the uh, What's the need to have multiple different partitions? Like multiple different partition layouts are because we have all these different use cases that Jordan laid out. And what we have in Zephyr right now, you know, I know because I was there, uh, is 
just kind of how we hacked it to get MCU boot upstream, right? Sure. Yeah. And we, we took a bunch of shortcuts and all of the fixed partitions layouts in all of our upstream device trees are basically just for MCU boot. And then, so now some people are saying, well, I don't want MCU boot, but I do want settings. And to me, that's just like a different layout, right? And the problem is that we're pointing our code partition or our settings partition inside of a partition layout that really logically is just for MCU boot. And so I'm trying to go up one level in the tree. But do so we, what we, really, do we want, to, do we yeah, want to have all use cases like partition types and layouts in the DTS in, in the Zephyr tree? I don't Is think it? so. No, I don't think we want all of them. But I think that if there are users that commonly agree that like, oh, these are important, then we can just add support for them on a case by case basis. And we can still have the a mechanism for extending it with something application specific, which is why it's kind of important that that is allowed by my proposal. Yeah, but but why wouldn't you make all of that application specific? I mean, we are trying to like put all kind of use cases there, like at least two here. Yeah, that because it's incredibly inconvenient, watch. right? Nobody, you know, enough users want this subset of use cases, as Jordan kind of amply demonstrates by his complete persistence in coming out here at like one in the morning his time, <laughs> that it's worthwhile, right? No, yeah, I'm it's, not it's, 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 sorry, go ahead. No, I'm not. I mean, this is this is definitely useful. Yeah, but I mean, when you get to this level of the okay, so I have two types of partitions, but then you also, I mean, somebody might have different needs on on the sizes, right? And how do I want to configure and the ordering? And probably I don't want this partition there. I want an additional partition in this layout. So I mean, where does that stop in terms of why not? give the flexibility completely to the application, right? If they want MCU boot, they just include it. Yeah. They do. They they do have this, but we have established the convention that it is beneficial to users to provide predefined partition layouts at the discretion of the board maintainer for at least one use case, which is MCU boot. And it's also clear to me that we want this for multiple different use cases, right? But we still want it to be in the hands of the user and it is, right? It's just not very convenient right now. And also, we, 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 there's also the fact that today the linker doesn't know that. So what Jordan is trying to solve as well is that you get a build error if you are building your app uh, in a configuration that you know the, the code won't fit there, right? And that's that's or a linker error rather, not the build error. So, so <laughs> what, what I really just want is automatic generation of these regions from device tree and some mechanism. I don't particularly care how those regions are specified because I can work around that. However, it's just the automatic part is what I kind of am interested in. So that's when you say question. automatic generation, what, what do you mean exactly, uh, Jordan? Automatic generation. So I would mean that you would generate a linker region for this partition, for this okay, partition, gotcha. this partition, gotcha. with, without so, having to go into the link script, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So Let's try to close on one conversation before we jump another, because <laughs> I think we never get anywhere because we do that. So, so back to, so I get Marty's kind of thing of having the different layouts here. What I guess I feel like is what is viewed as the fundamental way that you, we would end up selecting. You know, if, if we kind of say there's some convention, right, for having you know these one or two use cases. So we've kind of said, okay. You know, we we defined a way for MCU boot that if you enable MCU boot as the config option, it's going to use the you know the code partition property and and so forth, right? Um, if we're going to ex extend that to a second app, you know, second use case that we say we here's a convention for what are we? I feel like starting from the point of what it is, what's the way you select which thing it is. And then that can ripple into how do we how do we structure the information we can figure out. Um, but I guess to me, it's more about like what's the way that we're saying, you know, I want the settings use case versus I want the MCU boot use case versus the I don't want either or the you know the default or whatever we call it, you know, use case. How do you how are we saying that that's picked? Sorry, I muted some of you because there was some background noise. So if you were unmuted and now see yourself muted, that's the reason. I mean, from my perspective, I'd like to be able to select that from the command line. Um, 
Right. So I think I think there's always the option for, and maybe you, maybe you clarify this in a second, Jordan. Right. So there's always the option to kind of set it to anything, right? And from the command line by specifying kind of like how you had the the dash d overlay or whatever, right? So whatever mechanism we we have to specify that. Um, but I guess my question is: is it is there some convenience mechanism. I know when we talked about this last, I had kind of said, hey, you know, we, we kind of see that the bootloader is a very common use case. So having kind of some type of, you know, uh, you know, in the same way that we have like, uh, you know, dash D uh, board and dash D shield. Um, and from a CMake perspective at the top level, we could have something that's like dash D bootloader um, and, and you know, that gives you the, you know, you, that's saying, hey, I'm building for the bootloader use case and maybe there's a dash D settings or I don't know if that's, you know, what's being suggested or, or would be suggested. Um, but then there's always the kind of expert mode, which would be, you know, dash D, you know, use my overlay equals blah, blah, blah kind of thing, right? Um, so uh, to tie into that, I, 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 am, I am personally uh, favorable to something that uh, is as fast and as simple as dash L for layout. And I don't, and I wouldn't restrict it to the bootloader for the simple reason that you can switch between say storage and no storage partition using exactly the same mechanism. So I think a dash L makes sense to me, just uh, something. What I'm not so sure is that that dash L maps to an actual file call overlay. And instead it might map to something else, like a single, um, like a single partition sort of scheme that you have in your DTS like Matthew was proposing. So there's no reason we cannot combine the two ideas um, uh, or, you know, or, or whatever. But the, the dash L implies a chosen, basically, a particular chosen or a particular uh, chosen plus file or, you know, something like that. Uh, I like that idea because I think it's common enough and we've had it so many times uh, requested. Uh, you know, we've, we've had rec more requests for this than for many other features that we have in there uh, accessible. Uh, so, so yeah, that's that's and my vision here. Are, are we getting into just a simple problem of not knowing what features has been enabled in kconfig, like uh, MCU boot? If that is enabled, we would actually like a dedicated layout per default. That user, of course, can overrule. I don't is know whether whether no, I don't think so. Problem the here. main thing here is to be able to specify a particular a particular flash layout for an arbitrary application using a very simple mechanism. So so that is not what you're saying. Uh, whether that yeah, conflicts but, with then MCU boot, then uh, with with quick config MCU boot, that's another that we need yeah, to try different the issue them. that people need yeah. to specify this when they are actually just building for MCU boot or building like settings or similar that with some software configurations they might want a particular flash layout per default. That is so you're saying that default. settings, settings, well, that's that's the bit. So you're saying that if you select, if you enable settings or MCU boot in kconfig, that should also choose the partition. I'm asking, is that actually what we might need here? The problem today is that we are passing DTS before we pass kconfig, because we need the DTS symbols in kconfig. And that's so not I'm, change, I'm so. asking, no, that's not going to change, but I'm asking, is this actually some of our problem? Of course, users, users should still be able to specify a particular layout they want, irregardless of anything else, and that will overrule everything. But are we actually lacking a feature that can glue some software uh, configurations together with certain partition layouts? Yeah, I think we are. I think the issue is 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 exactly that, right? Is that you want to specify the partition configuration or all of this stuff, right? Which 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 application specific layout, right? Of memory, flash, whatever, right? You want to specify that when you invoke CMake, right? And and the fact that by the time kconfig comes into play, it's too late, right? Yeah. So that's. Can't, well, this kind of thing is potentially addressed by having layouts also apply a, a configuration file. Um, if you say you're building a bootloader, then or building for slot zero, then it's it, it's just Lex config bootloader MCU boot for you. 
Um, but, uh, so it's a hybrid of conf and uh, and uh, and the actual layout sort of. Well, I guess it's like it's 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 using the fact that when you when you say you're building a bootloader or a chain loaded application, it is a combination of hardware configuration plus software configuration. Mm -hmm. It's just when you set when you select what you want to build for it, just it does the two mechanisms we have, which are kconfig and DTS and. So here you select slot zero, and there's a slot zero overlay and slot zero conf, basically, which is pulled in the right order, basically, during the build. Yeah. Okay. As. But yes. but you would have to start with West build dash L slot zero, right? And that would make yes. ensure that you okay, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the dash L just tells CMake which things to include. So yeah, this. Six of it enough. The, the problem with this, I guess, that uh, I'm going to assume that uh, Torsten is going to complain because then you have to keep that coupling in every board, right? Like you cannot generalize that config bootloader in MC boot implies slot zero, um, you know, as, or as a generic slot zero um, flash layout, whereas you, 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 you have to duplicate that info in every particular board, right? Sure, but there's, there's plenty of examples of things which are duplicated in every board already. True. Like, Config GPI always enabled by default in every board that I've seen. <laughs> no, no, that's yeah. fair. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe we should like go back to a higher level and go like, do people generally agree that we should be gen automatically generating regions from device tree? Does that? Yes, I, I definitely agree with that. Are there know. any are there any but, weird architectures that still aren't using device tree for this? Uh, so I that's think that, we, sorry, go ahead, Jordan. Uh, I remember reading on some issue or pull requests that there are external users which aren't using device tree still, but those users are obviously not using the same linker scripts, which means it doesn't they can continue doing whatever they're doing, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, you still have the option to use your own linker script, yeah. So that was like, yeah, exactly. I was, I was just thinking about it because whatever you're proposing here related to DTS and kconfig was like the, the first thing we did in Zephyr five years ago is allow people to have their own custom linker script, which overrides completely what 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 you have in Zephyr. Yeah, and I think some people are doing that. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I think that's the the kind of the statement, right? We would say is like either you're getting this generated from device tree and so forth, and that if you want something different, use use your own uh, uh, your own linker script. So I think that's I, I I don't see any issue with that. All right, so my, my, go ahead. Well, I was just to say, automatic generation from device tree sounds like. That's a yes. Yeah. How does that how, how does that relate to the pull request just submitted by I didn't take a look at that by by Torsten with the all the, the link of script magic that is being introduced? Would that actually help that you can do that in an automatic way? Yeah. Torsten, I, I mean I just saw the pull um, request coming well, in. Well but... that that PR. Uh, it still lacks some integration to device tree, but in general, if we place partitions in device or we have partitions in device tree, we should still create the memory region based on device tree as well. So I don't see a conflict there, regardless of the way we start doing things. Mm -hmm. So this should be handled, able to handle any place. But it actually means that because we go through CMake into the linker script, you could also define additional memory regions in CMake, but I'm not sure that's the way we want to go. So far, we have the functionality available simply to be able to go from device tree to CMake and into the linker script that is being generated. Similar but to what we do today from device tree into uh, linker script that is being pre-processed. But what you were saying, like define uh, memory regions in the linker script, uh, sorry, in CMake, that's okay as long as it's software. But if it describes something in the hardware, especially you know if we consider partitions to be hardware here, then I don't think uh, 
that going into CMake is a good is a good idea. No, no, rather... but that's okay. that's just uh, similar to what we have today, where you actually define you may define uh, memory regions directly in the Linga script. Yes. That's right, exactly. But the, now yeah, they will be defined in CMake instead of in the linker script. But it's as bad to have to go it, to CMake it, than it is to it, go it to. It should the ideally script. come from a single source, coming from device tree and then being fed into the script that generates the actual yeah. linker script. But as device tree cannot itself uh, generate the linker script, we actually need to take the information from device tree and place it in a linker script. And the functionality that does that is available to users. We cannot hide that. We can say they should not do it, but we cannot hide it. Wait a second. So you're suggesting that the uh, the, 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 the 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 based on your gener so right now the linker script is fixed. Uh, uh, you need to modify it with your PR that disappears and it's CMake that's generating the sections at runtime. So what are you suggesting we do after your PR is merged? With the uh, with the big sections, the one that the ones that would come from device tree, would they still be hard coded in the device tree? Uh, sorry, in the linker script, or would you generate them from CIM from they would device be generated. tree? Okay. They would be generated from device tree, I would say. All right, all right, okay. That would that be my sense. proposal. Yeah. But yeah. it is also for for SRAM or just for Flash? Also, we can do it. So the CMake basically doesn't care where it comes from. It's a fun function in CMake, and what we put into that function, uh, we decide where the source originates. So the source could originate from device tree, or in principle, it could be a, a local configuration if you want to. But I think that was outside the, this meeting, so. Well, not really, right? Because the, one of the main uh, objectives here is to get auto auto um, mechanism, you know, auto generation of these linker regions, and those linker regions then actually uh, are used for linking. So, you know, if that yeah, PR of yours in you know. that case would uh, would need the information of whether certain settings were enabled, like MCU boot or settings or something that requires a different layout. That was why I tried to go back to what is our, what is one of our root problem here. Mm. But it might be something we could uh, look more into in that direction. That's not uh, what I have had in mind so far. So th several things, right? Defining multiple partition layouts uh, in device tree, both for flash and RAM seems to be an accepted thing. Uh, and then, and then those tying into linker script sections. Everybody wants that, I think. Um, you know, how many is open to dispute, but the ability to do that, which is already there today, but in a more organized fashion. How to select them? Either it's via user interaction, direct user interaction, like selecting the layout, or as as you Torsten were saying, indirectly via kconfig. Uh, when I select config MCU, that auto selects the a particular layout. Uh, I don't know the advantage and disadvantages of those two. Uh, it would depend, I guess. How how would you select? Like I select settings. Uh, okay, so if I select settings and MCU boot, that would create storage plus chain partitions, uh, or would include all of those and put it uh, put in there. Yeah, I guess. I think it has to be known before K config in general, right? Because we run into so many issues when then 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 the information you're getting from device tree is not, you don't know what's like, what's the memory size for my system until I look at kconfig, right? I can't just look at DTS anymore. Uh, well, I was thinking more of a mechanism by which, you know, something in between where there would be some special kconfig options that would be parsed, uh, special kconfig options that actually influence the layout choice, not all of them would, right? So you wouldn't really parse kconfig, then device tree, then kconfig. I wasn't thinking that far. I was like, uh, instead of the dash L, somehow uh, the, the resolution of your conf, and that way might get tricky. I don't know how to go about that. You know, I'm just trying to explore the, the proposal from Torsten, which I think kind of makes sense, but uh, I don't know if it's feasible at all. 
Uh, I, I, I don't know. think I proposed anything. I was just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. No, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. but but I think it makes sense. Like like some some k-config options resolve things. Now, whether we can use that info or not, I don't know. I, I guess I, I kind of come back to just something where it's as to me it's as simple as specifying you know a dash whether it's L D whatever you want to whatever letter you want to use. I don't really care. But the that you're you're specifying when you uh configure CMake in addition to the board, you're effectively specifying an additional like DTS to start from, right? And that and under the board, that may be that it's the the MCU boot DTS I want to start from. Maybe that's the settings DTS I want to start from. Maybe it's Kumar special DTS I want to start from. But then that that top level DTS then will have the right settings for, you know, for however, you know, you want to set Zephyr SRAM and Zephyr Flash. And do I want to expose, uh, you know, for that particular MCU boot one, if I want to have partitions, you know, I need those there, then I can I can put them in that DTS and then include the, the board one and, you know, do whatever I want, right? But it's really just about selecting a DTS, um, at the top level to me that's specific to whatever you're wanting to do at that particular with that particular build. I, I agree with you, Kamar. I had an idea just now. So like, you know how we have DTS bindings, right? And DTS root controls the bindings. And then you can just kind of include a binding that comes from wherever and you don't really care. I mean, it sounds like we want something similar for overlays, right? Bas basically, you're, you're, I think you're generalizing Jordan's proposal in a similar way to what I want to do. Like, my main concern with the existing proposal is that it says layouts and it's in the board directory and that's the only place you're going to put it. And I don't like that because it won't scale. So maybe we want like DTS slash overlays and then, you know, you can, that, that's like a global search path or something like that. So I'm not, I'm not sure if like, a global search path works just because like a different different system on chips have different flash sizes you won't be able to specify partitions that are applicable for all of them but i think we could easily do something similar to how the um what's already being done with overlays and and basically if if the if the, if the dash else um doesn't resolve under the board layout then you, you search the application directory and search under layout slash whatever your board thing is whatever your board yeah. name is and find more find more overlays there don't, don't we have a solution for the board specific portion about this for, in shields erwan is there one here yes i'm there don't don't you have a way within a shield to specify like a board specific search path for things uh yes we can uh, for each shield yes we can uh, specify board uh, some specific board configuration Per sheet. Maybe we can use the same mechanism here. What do you think? Is there like a file system layout that you use? Uh, that's that. That's just a, uh, how does it work? Uh, that's just CMake uh, that is going to to look into specific paths. I got a small idea as well, um, but I just need some uh, more background knowledge on the current uh, partitions in device tree. So today when we do device tree, we, are, we use it mainly for being able to access uh, hardware from our code. So that let's say I, I configure GPIO, I can access the GPIO in my driver in a generic way so I can actually use that and, and uh, configure it. Um, but the partitions today, I assume, are not used directly from the sources, are they? What do you mean by directly? I mean, the, the, they show up in the flash map, right, for one. Yes, yes. But let's say I need to access, well, in, in this case, uh, the slot one partition, slot zero partition. I will not go through the... Uh, DTS on that one. I would probably be using linker symbols on that one, right? So, you, uh, it actually depends. But for example, the sorry, systems usually 
access uh, storage by the Flatteria macro that takes uh, definition of from DTS, um, the label of the partition. Okay, so the labels from the partitions are actually being used. Okay, um, because what I was just thinking about is that if those were not used, we could actually, after passing the de device tree and uh, passing the K config, we could know if we needed before generating the linker to to part to do any additional partitioning and verify that those are not overlapping. But that would will not work if we are accessing those. Uh, settings from device tree in the code. But it was just a loose idea I just got. So I guess in the interest of nailing down some more specifics, so we've agreed on automatic generation is good. Um, in terms of how RAM should be partitioned, is there general agreement on the reserved um, reserved memory system, or do people think there should be a RAM version of flash partitions? Or Jordan, or hello, this... hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, Jordan, I want, wanted just to to uh, comment on on the idea of generating uh, linker regions from the partitions. Um, I think this breaks the idea of, of upgrading uh, because you cannot access any partition that is uh, going to be upgraded. Otherwise, your images come, become a lot uh, longer than, than just a selected partition. So, as long as you still compile the same application with the same layout, the flash, like the flash memory region, doesn't change size. It doesn't auto scale to how large your application is. Um, yeah, but if you if you generate the region you want to use it, why generate it if you don't want to use it? And as soon as you start using it, you can't upgrade anymore. So some of it is just to inform the user that, that it exists. For example, your your non-secure application isn't going to put variables into the secure RAM. That like it just doesn't make sense. No, I'm talking about the flash partitions. So suppose you um, make an application for slot zero, and you also use the scratch partition or even the uh, settings partition. But as soon as well, you make some software that uses this other partition, you can't upgrade anymore. Sure, but I would class that as a user configuration error. Um, like the, the purpose of automatically generating all these partitions is is not for the MCU boot stuff, it's for the settings partitions, other um, other settings libraries which want to which want to generate or place variables at known locations. Um, mostly so, file systems to be honest, but but so this mechanism isn't usable in uh in any layout that is not uh, the standalone. Sorry, why do you why do you say that? Uh, because um, I'm accessing memory uh, that I'm not upgrading. Suppose you make an image for slot zero partition. Yep. And you also use the settings partition. Then you will get a, an image that is a lot larger than only slot zero. Mm -hmm. And what will you do? How you, will you upgrade? So slot zero you can upgrade, but your settings partition you cannot. Yes. Currently, the settings partition doesn't place variables at compile time. That's purely a runtime thing. Um, if you are generating um, memory regions and placing variables into non-contiguous memory, then it's up to you to handle that when you want to upgrade, stripping out link stripping out sections from your old files or whatever else. 
but you still cannot upgrade it. There is no mechanism to, to put it there. Yes, from the like from an MCU boot perspective, there is no mechanism to put it there, correct? But in the context of a, of a file system, for example, that doesn't matter as such because you you play with the file system at runtime. That's that's my use case anyway. I want to put a I want to put a separate flash separate file system on Flash at some defined location, which is only yeah, but, but then you can, and in that case, you can define your entire uh, partition as your image partition and then uh, reserve an area uh, like the, the memory regions for in your uh, image partition. Yes, you could make slot zero partition larger in this case. I think you'd have to make them all larger. I'm not entirely sure on that though. And I'm talking about reserving like half of flash for my file system. I can't I can't shove half of flash into each of my partitions. I still don't understand how, how uh, this is going to work. So if you have the region defined, I don't know how you're going to use it. At runtime. Because you, you have the memory addresses. You can say, yep, yeah. memory address. You, you should, should, should get a section inside the region, right, to be able to use it. Yeah, but if you want a section inside the region, I would say, OK, your complete flash is your image, and you have a, uh, section inside your image, which is uh, for that. But like, so in the case where you want half of your flash space to be whatever, you yeah. can't just put half of your flash space inside slot zero. It doesn't work. Um, of course it doesn't work. Uh, this this would mean that your slot zero is your your entire uh, flash area. So I'm I'm not talking, and I guess you're not talking about an MC, MCU boot uh, solution, but something else. No, I'm I'm talking about MCU boot. Basically, I want the I want the bootloader, the application image yeah. slots, and Scratch to live in the first half of Flash, and then some other file system which lives at the second half of flash which when i when i flash things at my computer i can use one elf file which has initial values and then later on i just have to dynamically upgrade them over the air or whatever through remote procedure calls or something but this is probably getting a bit, bit too into the weeds of what my intent use case is Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And and how are you going to uh, use external flash? Because you can only use these things in on um, internal flash, not the external. Sure, but I don't want to use an external flash. And do we need to add this then also in the DTS definitions? This is external flash. So, so I think, yeah, so I think there's some things that we need to hash out here and figure out. I mean, I think for the the starting of this, we can limit the linker generation to just whatever is being referenced to by the chosen properties, right? Because then that's consistent with what we have today and it cleans up, you know, it moves this forward, right? At least it's, it's you're, there's a single source, um, you know, we kind of, Get rid of the cake and fig options and so forth, and then it's it's still consistent. I I think I understand some of Laxon's concerns about if you start generating uh, additional linker sections in your binary now for things that weren't there before, that 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 potentially has some issues that we need to figure out how how to handle and what we want to do. Um, but I think we can kind of iterate through and, and make some steps forward. Um, and then kind of tackle those problems as we, you know, as we get to them. So, 
So the problem with just generating um, generating the uh, the regions just directly from the chosen nodes is that, I mean, to begin with, that's that's already what's happening, right? It's already just taking SRAM zero and flash zero and just generating them. That's not the the point is that the the rest of the partition information is being lost. Well, so so I, I mean, so I think we kind of again, I'm trying to tackle and clean up some issues that we have. So for example, right, getting rid of, of code partition, for example, right? So we have a singular way of specifying this regardless of, of what's happening, right? So there's there's kind of an iterative, I, I get that, yeah, you need some more information for what you're trying to do, um, but also like how do we take steps forward so we actually get some, right? We're, we have a boiling the ocean problem here, right? That there's a lot of different things that a lot of different people see, and I think it's, my take it's better to take some of that off of the you know the table and solve it move it get it done clean it up progress it and then be like okay now that that's cleaned up and in a good state we can now you know we don't we don't have to keep hashing over that same ground to get to the next thing right because i i do get that there's issues here and again i think we we've done this and i'm i'm trying to kind of pull us back from a let's solve and come to some conclusions on a few things or what we can today. I think we kind of at least sort of said, yeah, okay, we can get to this point where we can probably deprecate or remove the cake and fig options and clean that up. Um, so that that stuff's just coming from device tree. I think we could, I, I still would like to get to some conclusion today around how we're saying you should specify effectively the root device tree that you want to use for that particular configuration application build, right? Is is that, is, you know, is it as simple as just something like it that I can say, you know, dash D board, you know, freedom K64, and I can now specify dash, and we probably have something already like this, but just, you know, dash D device tree equals, you know, MCU boot dot DTS or something, you know, um, and then that will, pick up that configuration for me. I would say that it can be inside your, your application for MCU boot. You just have an overlay inside your MCU boot directory and you just specify this. So this is this, you're right. So this is the, the issue I keep coming back to is everyone's yeah. got a different way they want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and and we either we either need to say that there is because you know that that that's that's where we we never seem to make agreement or mm -hmm. comments, I think, is that of saying, okay, what is the way, you know, on the command line, whether it's here's the West invocation, here's the CMake invocation for doing these three use cases that we have, right? Which is I want to build the bootloader, I want to build something with settings, I want to build something with nothing, and then maybe my, our four the fourth one is my own personal configuration. Right. I'd like to see what people say to how do you do those four things? So, OK, so so w to, today we already have that, as you were saying, it's dash the DTC overlay file and uh, off you go. But that that as as uh, many people have complained, is not very practical. And uh, in the same way that you could probably do West build and then dash 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 the board equals something, we have a dash B, right, to sh shortcut. So why not have this dash, you know, overlay or dash L for layout or whatever you want to call it, um, you know, a shortcut for the overlay file. And we need to solve the paths, I agree. But what's, I mean, what, what's the downside of having that other than having arbitrarily chosen something to put a shortcut for? Sure. But other than that, what, what's the downside, right? And, and it would make, and again, it wouldn't preclude the use of the 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 full sure, uh, yeah, CMake yeah. option. Yeah. So so what are you, so you're suggesting just to be clear that I would have dash l MCU boot or like correct? What, what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, bootloader or MCU boot, and that needs to map to an overlay file, so, or or no, actually, either an overlay file or a meta or so some name in the .dts file of the board. And I don't care if it's a file as uh, 
as Jordan was suggesting, or a part of the main DT, board DTS that as Marty was suggesting, but it matches a name, either of a file or, as, or of a note. And then, so that's, I get that part. So how, what, what are the, def, the, what are you suggesting as the specific dash L's that we would support? Well, uh, that's a, that's a, uh, a good question. That's why I asked uh, also Jordan. Either we support a specific set, or that dash L is simply passed along, and it fails if it doesn't find either the file or the node. But then, why is that any different than specifying like how is dash L that much better than dash D overlay equals? Because you have to do West build board sample space dash dash then space then dash d ddc overlay filing caps equals <laughs> quotes i mean so, there's yeah. a massive difference but isn't isn't the dash l is a list thing and the dash d is a cmic thing and they should actually be exactly the same thing depending on what you are using i'm not sure exactly why we are arguing about it's, dash l it's like dash, dash it's like dash d board right it's like like dash yeah, d board yeah 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 or dash d config so, whatever you can have any dash D uh, available to you. No, what I'm saying is that we have a shortcut for the specific case of the board, right? Of which board you build against. So the, this is yeah. like adding one, one more case, which is a, a, a shortcut for the DTC overlay file equals something. Yeah, and this is this is probably going to be like, if you want to override whatever you have, you know, already, or you, you have your own. But uh, for example, I mean, some of them, I mean, just to the question that came earlier, I think from Kumar is, like if you are enabling MCU boot, I mean the, I mean the, those can't be like random overlays or la, random layouts. They have to be associated with a feature. I mean if if we are going to have them in the so right now if you look at the some zephyr some boards in the zephyr tree, a lot of them have the MCU boot uh, partition uh, table, right? So this yep. actually would probably taken out of the baseline board and put in an overlay. And if you are using MCU boot, it would be enabled or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. But I that's mean, the thing. That's what that's what Torsten said that is, but it's not oh, possible because you don't yeah. right. It's not possible because you 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 select that before you pass K config. So you don't know if config MCU boot is set true or not. So so Carl, at that like, point. So I think this the the points I'm getting to then is that there's maybe some some convenience to be added to West to sort of conveniently specify the overlay file so when you don't have to specify dash D blah 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 that, that's you know like no issue there either uh, that or, or either that or a little that, bit more like, logic where you would actually set the chosen based on that dash L which would be, be you know perhaps go one 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 step further yeah well I'll, just just setting the chosen doesn't move you any closer to getting the correct partition tables. Yeah, so 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 let's so there's some convenience in West to make picking the overlay, you know, easier. And then is there I think related to that is that there's some convention about a few overlay names of a few specific names of overlays that would have specific purposes so that they'd be consistent across the tree that we'd have like mcu boot dot overlay or something right yeah and and so the question is what is that set that we would have is it just you know we have obviously mcu boot you know is there some others that people have today when you say <laughs> mcu boot are you differentiating between the bootloader and the chain loaded application or yeah so so uh slot zero right so it's 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 like if you go back to your set, i think you had a very good set in your slides uh um jordan uh the one that shows uh the different options you share that uh, i think that was a good set when you select uh wait i'm sorry I, based on the, the discussion now i actually have uh, a small idea i want to share so if you could go back to this, that one, yes, yeah. this slide, that exactly. One, yeah. Because here we see we have a standalone overlay and we, we then have the bootloader overlay, but we have the chain partitioned DTS also. And this looks like, uh, let's say, a Nordic board as well that are defining four partitions here, slot zero, slot one, scratch and boot. And what we are discussing today is that today we are 
uh, ignoring those partitions completely in the linker script, which is why we basically need the offset. So if you enable MCU boot, you will need the offset to place it at the address for the slot zero partition, your image normally. Um, and this is done by taking in the uh, code partition from device tree in the K config. So the K config can define the offset and then use that for the linker script generation today. But this is not really tied to the partition. But could we somehow glue those two together so that we in the device tree can specify a set of partitions for like, uh, so I can specify both the boot and the slot zero, slot one and so on. And I can at the same time specify the partition as a standalone. And then when I run the CMake, I know whether bootloader is enabled or not, just to take an example here. And if the bootloader is enabled, I know I should select the partitions from the table of this chain where I have the boot, I have the slot zero, I have the slot one, I have the scratch. Or if nothing is enabled, I should just take the standard standalone partitions. And you can then have different setups. Uh, and based on what you have selected, that means you could have a third set of partitions that will be selected in case you have some other configurations enabled. That would mean we could get rid of some of the offsets in kconfig as well, I think. And the CMake then knows because both kconfig and uh, DTS has been passed, we know which we set know. of partitions to choose. I think I understand you. Uh, so basically put all the options in there in the DTS and then based mm -hmm. on kconfig later, kconfig pulls from DTS the relevant ones based on known names somehow. Yeah, kconfig uh, doesn't need to pull anything. We should get rid of all the offsets in kconfig. And then the linker generation in CMake will know which set of partitions or how to partition the linker script. But where's the logic? The where's the logic if config uh, bootloader MCU boot then pull this partition? Where, where would you put that logic? Yeah, that means we need to specify that, okay, if let's say MCU boot is enabled, we need to make sure we pick a partition set that has a boot partition. Right, and where do you put that logic is my question. In which code, where, where in the code? It's... Mm. Yeah, so that could be most likely in kconfig because in kconfig is where you select MCU select. boot. Yeah, so, so that's, 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 that's what uh, Ioannis to... proposed a long time ago. So we're going back in circles to ideas that have been proposed like months ago. Uh, so we, we need... So what exactly did he propose on that part? A very similar, something very similar to what you just described. Uh, to, not to say almost the same. I can put the, the PR later. So we there's, there's an, that's another way of solving this. The proposal was like you define the alternative layouts in uh, device tree, exactly as uh, we are discussing here, I mean partition layouts, and then use the kconfig logic that comes after you have all the kconfig options like MCU boot, bootloader, and so on, to implement, uh, to, to basically choose the right things in kconfig and then feed the linker with this information. So this was uh, engineered in a way that I, uh, is, is what is very similar to what Torsten here describes. Except similar we don't need the kconfig to select anything. We can have the kconfig just to say, if you choose in view boot, you need to choose a partition that has a boot partition. Yeah, this yeah, is, I, yeah, the, the link that uh, Carlos posted here is exactly what you're saying. It's very okay. similar to this. Yeah. yeah, it sounds similar, yeah. I think there are slight uh, variations, but that's common. Sure. I, I think the the, the, bro, the the one of the reasons why we find it so hard to agree on on something here is that uh, although this is a problem that almost everyone is facing, uh, it is not that difficult to solve. Uh, app by app when you start de developing your app. So it's not something that's blocking sort of anyone. Uh, it's almost a convenience. I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but. 
except for me because I want my little <laughs> fast and thing, which is why I'm pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough, fair enough. And I, I agree, you know, there's, there's certainly value there. It's been pushed not only by you, Jordan, but by others also. And now there's also the, 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 the RAM partitioning, which actually blocks stuff also. So, um, yeah. Also, I, I have a question because yeah, uh, I see the position to provide uh, uh, a few uh, files for the Skype uh, partitioning, uh, which will be needed for uh, application, uh, which will be trying loaded by the bot loader and also by bot loader. But how to how to distinguish which one should be used? I mean that for uh for instance for uh direct direct execution in place which is absolute feature which makes able to run image either from slot zero or slot one uh we will want to combine both images how to how to, how to make a choice I didn't get I that answer. Okay, uh, so uh, basically, the uh, MCU boot currently supports something uh, that uh, you may place your application in any slot. If it's for any slot, it will uh, select the application on boot depending on the version, for example. So if you have a version higher in some slot, next boot, you're going to get that application execute. And uh, the, the beauty of the minus L or the uh, layout selection during boot uh, allows you, without providing any additional overlay, basically switch between slots. Yeah, so you can, okay, you have application for uh, direct skip in slot uh, zero, no problem, you just uh, execute uh, layout for slot one if it's provided by default, and you can execute um, uh, the application from other slot. So this, this I think that this is uh, actually nice because uh, the, the the use of uh, command line to switch uh, is very useful because it doesn't uh, uh, bring you the hassle to have several DTS somewhere hidden and keep them to build application separately for all sorts. Yeah, can you quickly um, uh, switch them? So I don't know whether you understand. I mean, I, I would like to be in a position where you could build the Blinky application, for example, as a standalone application or as a chain loaded application without having to have like stale Git history that you need to change, right? Right. No, uh, wait. I would rather we are not talking about the uh, standalone application. You have MC boot. MC boot allows you some uh, the feature to boot any application from any slot. So uh, currently, if you want to exercise this, you basically have to change the DTS for the application to load from the other slot. Oh, yeah, sorry. Take on, yeah. yeah. So yeah, well, no, yeah. So, so what I was saying is that I was, I was proposing this so that you could change where an application was going, whether it be different slots or standalone or whatever without having to change CMake files or DTS or kconfig. Right, and so I think if I understand, and this I come back to, so, so Marty kind of suggested this dash O option just to have something distinct. So we'd have west build minus O, you know, chain dot overlay or west build minus O, you know, MCU boot dot overlay, and that would get you your yeah. two builds, right? Yeah, yep, yeah. actually. I was thinking because uh, we have this uh, board switch that basically if you uh, provide something bad, it will list you all the possible boards. And as I understand the feature, it basically means that for every board, you will have all this uh, uh, default uh, overlays provided as the board supports them. Yeah. So uh, basically, we may actually um, 
when you perform the build for seven boards, we may probably just figure out what I layouts are uh, allowed for that board during the first run and uh, list the information to the uh, user if uh, if he fails to select a uh, proper board. Yeah. Uh, if there is a problem of default board, which has been mentioned uh, that uh, you would, uh, the only solution is to select by kconfig, because for example, we have Hello World, which will by default build for, for the as a standalone application. And on the other side, you have the SMP SVR application, which uh, may use this, exactly the same uh, configuration, but it requires uh, MCU boot, and we want we want to start from slot, for example, zero. So, and we don't know that before we start the uh, the with before we build the DTS the, or the um, compiled DTS. So there's a, this problem, but uh, we could uh, uh, basically. Uh, detect possible uh, configurations uh, in a form you may provide for, to the to this uh, uh, data layout. Uh, for example, this um, um, a path uh, kind of path, uh, uh, you know, selector. For example, you choose that you will be say uh, using uh, layout for MCU boot slash slot zero. And uh, if you you spend alone, you provide nothing. And if you have other layouts, you just uh, choose the other layout. I don't know what the bootloaders are there. Uh, slash the slot you want to, or partition you want to start the application. Maybe that's the solution. At least yeah. for selection, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that's basically, I think one way to do that, and probably that's exactly what you are saying there is, we will have, I mean, right now, if you look at them, some of the boards, they have the MCU boot partition table or, or layout, which is like the default. Yeah. So that actually would was just taken out and put in a in a default dot overlay where that is needed. And that would be like the, you know, if, if you have a default overlay, you know, in the layout directory somewhere, then it's loaded by default. Yeah. If you want to override that, you just override that with dash O, dash L or whatever. Yeah. So you can basically just just do that in this case. Then you don't have the problem with the K config. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you sort of do. You don't have the problem yeah. with K config. So if you, if you override that with the dash O, does that set any any dot conf automatically or not? According to the is that is that akin to the to the proposal with Jordan that selecting one particular layout would also come with a dot conf potentially, or or is that decoupled from that? I think that can be done. That's that's like uh, something that is easy to implement and easy yeah. to, and uh, would make things actually more flexible. Yeah. So I think that can be done. Uh, basically, the schema is that you can have slot zero overlay. You can have no conf at all, but if you want to add additional information about this overlay or or add the features that would actually benefit from that then you can add that to a dot conf yeah then mm -hmm. automatically this would be selected and that actually would solve the problem yeah yeah that that that's part of the proposal here just yeah. i mean just to i i really don't want to complicate matters uh, more but uh this chain partitions example uh standalone bootloader blah 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 really are not board dependent, right? So this could be easily be a percentage and have something that pre-processes some templates and then generates the those for a particular board, right? To make yeah, matters you don't worse. To man, yeah, you don't, I don't think you have to maintain that for each board probably. And that's the, there has to be like some layering, probably similar to what is done with the shield or something like that is you go, okay, either it's in the local folder and then in the board and it's OC, blah, blah. You can you can do whatever you want there. Well, there may be a board it's, dependency though, right? I mean, you may have an external flash that's on the board and not on ship. True. It's it's also not all percentage based, like your boot and scratch partitions don't need to change size regardless of how large yeah. the flash is. Yeah. So yeah, in, in that, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so let's let's not, I mean, we can bike shed on how to structure this. I don't think that's that critical. We can, I think that can be figured out to make this more convenient in the search pass and all that stuff. So so I think I heard it sounded like to kind of, so we, we kind of had this, 
dash O specify an overlay. Now it was kind of like, okay, we want to kind of have a convenience to specify an overlay and a comp file. Because, you know, we can, again, figure out the logic if one doesn't exist or the other, blah, blah, blah. Right. So is that, is the term just to use something and we can bike shed it later in a PR layout? Is that, you know, that, that I would specify that I could now specify both in West, you know, a dash L, you know, foobar, and then I mean, I'm going to look for foobar.overlay, foobar.conf, um, and apply those to my build. Is, is that kind of what we're saying? Yeah, that's why I actually, uh, if you do like dash O for overlay, that can be anything. And if we are just going to be addressing the layout problem, that has to be specific. Whatever option you add there needs to be specific for layout. Yeah. Because uh, right. you will be looking for layouts in this case and not not any other random overlays that you might have in the in the tree. Yeah. True, but then the, the go ahead. I disagree. I think this is a perfectly general mechanism and it should be treated as such. That's that's just my opinion. That's only if you don't want to put more logic in that dash L, right? So if later on that dash L, for whatever reason, we want to put more logic specific to the to the layout, then the dash O wouldn't, you know. So I we could have, yeah. But we're, we're safe from that because we just agreed that everything is in the device tree, right? Um, probably, but uh, you know, I don't know. Looking to the future, I I don't know whether there will be a look. Look at the look at the. You know, in this case, for example, just look at the the folder name layouts, right? So I know you don't like that because of this, but uh, if you do dash O, then uh, according to what you wrote in the chat, it would be like search in some search path that would include, I guess, the board fo uh, folder, right? And try to find that overlay file. Yeah. The the nice thing about it is the DTS root already includes the board. Okay. What about if you have multiple layout? Uh, sorry, multiple overlays. For so that's multiple calls for dash o, dash o bootloader overlay, dash o sensor overlay, or how, how is that going to work? Yeah, that's fine. You can do that in Python. You can specify that the argument accumulates as a list. Yeah, yeah. And theory or or should be additive. Um, if you're specifying more than one, so I don't see that being an issue either. But I go back to: Is there a need for specifying a comp or not? If you don't, right? Then, uh, then the the we you you. So imagine the the end goal, right? If we if we describe the end goal as I have Blinky, and then I want to build that as standalone with some storage. That's predefined, huh? or as an MCU boot uh, slot zero, then then you do have to be able. If you do want to do that in a very very simple way, like dash L or dash O or something, then yes, you would need uh, a conf uh, to go along with that. Because today it's not enough. At least with the current code, it's not enough to just change the device array. You also need to change key config. And unless we start doing something akin to what Torsten and Johannes were proposing, which is binding the two together, then they have to be dealt with independently. The logic has to be there. So in, so the, or the options have to be both in device three and k-config, meaning you have yeah, to select yeah. so, both. So, 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 so then, yeah, go ahead, Garth. No, no, that's, so the answer, I guess the short answer is for the simplest change to the current code tree, the answer is yes, you need a conf okay. if so you I'll, want to be able to do that. Yeah. I'll, Marty, I know you don't like the word layout, but I just want to use it for now because I don't have a better one. Um, we can again figure out better. So, so then what I'm suggesting as a summary of this conversation is that you, we could specify both in West a dash L, uh, you know, foobar, and then that will f look for foobar.conf and foobar.overlay and apply that to my build. And then similarly, we could have a dash D. Layout equals foobar and CMake if we want to support that as well, or or so forth. Is that seem like an understanding? Do I, we need an additional CMake variable? I thought the idea would just be that it would extend existing CMake variables. I, we can ask that as to whether we want to make it convenient for people or not. So, yeah. to me, it doesn't sound like an ideal solution. 
But is there an ideal solution to uh, <laughs> to this problem? I mean, you know, uh, I understand you, but then yeah. it's either this or start putting logic in CMake somewhere else. Logic that probably doesn't belong there. Um, so I don't know. I'm I mean, I'm, I'm like more a general, inclined generalization of what we're doing with shields today. So you know, extending that or extending that logic to consider these other use cases seems logical to me. Yeah. And that's I, yeah, similar to a shield, which I think is nice. Yeah, I think I think we need to look at the solution in CMIC first, and then solve it in West, you know, later. Yeah, but first, but first, it needs to be solved, similar to what we are doing with shields. Yeah. At a certain level, it already is solved in CMIC. Like you, you can specify an overlay and a conf file. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I think the the two things would be one, the convenience of specifying it a little easier. But yes, I agree that it's doable today. And then the other is having potentially a few well-defined names that are reserved um, for specific well-defined purposes would be the the second kind of aspect of this. So this would be basically your if tab type of thing, yeah, or whatever, yeah. Okay, well, we're running up on the top of the hour. That was a lot of good discussion. I hope we got made some progress. I knew at least that you know the my I've got a couple summaries out of this, and 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 I, and I know it's probably not as far as as Jordan would hope, um, for as long as we've been talking about this. But I do think there's at least some some steps forward, some cleanups that can be looked at in in just dealing with some of the stuff with regards to kind of our use of of cake and fig and DTS and the linker. To, you know, some of that stuff can, so we can slowly work on cleaning that up for this release, I think, um, and, and at least progress, uh, you know, forward some in, in this path. And then obviously I think we can uh, work up a, at least a, a draft PR on, on at least the sort of uh, single configuration akin to shield um, and sort of see how that plays uh, for people and sort of, you know, hash through the sort of give us some some specific use cases um, and show how those would work for for our board, and and I think that's something we can look at doing. So, anything else in the last couple of minutes here? Okay. Well, thanks everybody. That was uh, really good, and and uh, good to have the extended time today for that. And thanks, Jordan. Thank you. It was uh, late for you in in Australia. <laughs> No, it's all good. Thank Two you, AMs. Jordan. Night's still early. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Jordan, for putting this together as well. Thank you. No problem. Stop the recording. <laughs>